Fabulous flowers, luscious lawns, verdant veggie plots and backyards. What does your garden say about you? If it's crying out for an overhaul, or you simply need help to get started, then we're here to inspire you. We're happy. We've got a good start. We're having a chat. Is that a good shot for you? I'm Chris Beardshaw, passionate horticulturalist, landscape architect, and mad keen cyclist. I propagated my first seeds when I was four, and haven't looked back since. <laughs> Is that broad appreciation? <laughs> and I'm Colin Donaldson, builder, landscape gardener, and mad keen biker. For me, it's always been about the property and the landscape working together. Okay, and if there's heavy machinery involved, then all the better. I'm trying to get a tune out of that. <laughs> We're on a mission to help six families transform their gardens. So let's get up and grow. School teachers Dave and Julie Hardy have just finished building their dream home. Dave and Julie are passionate about growing their own produce, especially now there's a new addition to the family, baby Theo. Neither of us are afraid to get our hands dirty no, and get stuck in. Get stuck in, as long as somebody permits. On our first visit, we set about giving Dave and Julie a starter pack for growing their own. That was a seriously busy day, Chris. Building raised beds, then filling them in with edible plants, then fighting with the polytunnel to get the frame up before the rain came and nightfall. Get some more bags of topsoil. It was busy, but we gave Dave and Julie those basic tools, and then look what they did. They filled the polythene tunnel full of edibles that can be picked and taken straight to the kitchen. <laughs> nice bird, Chris. He's like your doppelganger. Everything's just together mm -hmm. and you can come out and we can spend a couple of hours out here mm -hmm. and we can just walk away and the time just flies by doesn't it we're still obviously still getting used to having Theo as well so I'm used to just going and doing things so it's kind of remembering that I've got to you know, take the pram with me I can't can seem to find leader. wellies <laughs> quite that small yet but we'll, we'll get yeah. there school finished um, today so um, now I've got eight or nine weeks off now where I can really get stuck in this looks like a proper productive garden, so does it feel like a productive garden? Yes, it's been really nice to actually come out and sort of almost pick which lettuce you're going to have for tea tonight. And you end up with, you're eating half of it before you get in. You're like, oh, one for me, one for the bucket, one for me, one for the bucket. Yes. Yeah. Um, Would you like to increase the size of this? Or, uh, yeah, just yeah some there's things we haven't got in, like potatoes. Anything like that just occupies so much space mm. and you have to be generous with the amount of space that you, you dedicate to yeah. it. So I suggest that what we do is to start to look around to see where, where we can make those larger beds mm. because they, those beds will be very different to the beds that we've got over here. But that seems the next logical step. If you're prepared to invest just that <laughs> extra little bit of time, you think this is absorbing some time. If you want a little bit of extra time but greater rewards, then I think bigger <laughs> beds are the way to go. Now with the summer coming along and um, hopefully we'll get some good weather and we can get out and Together we can get some stuff done. Three metre and then 900 path. And then we can always shoot it down, can't we? So Chris, you decided that we should build some more bigger beds. Isn't that a little ambitious? Extending the area may seem like a very strange thing to be doing, given that the guys are still in that very early stage of getting familiar with how the fruits and veggies are starting to settle down. But actually by making the space larger, the range of produce they can grow suddenly becomes extended, and also the nature of that produce. Yep. Ah. Bit early in the day for a drink that strong, isn't it? I needed that before the Chris Maths for Paths class. Three beds where they're four metres by three metres with a 900 path between. And if we want to put a hedge in here, then there's not enough room to get a, a path and a hedge in that space, obviously. You, well, you're looking here for a, about a metre off of this fence. If you say that's 11.30, so you're looking 10. for 10.30, and that would give you 500 for a hedge and, mm -hmm. and a 500 path, which is, that's a very narrow path. Yeah. Would 600 be too narrow? Just walk your wheelbarrow yeah. through, that's the easiest thing to do. Yeah. That's a nice shiny new wheelbarrow. It is. I killed the other one. <laughs> <laughs> you could get away with a 600. Yeah, so I think 700, 700. to be safe. Mm, yeah. Well, if you go with 700 paths then, mm -hmm. 
good crops rely on one thing, good muck. Still steaming. That's when you know it's good stuff. I think if we just get it in through the gates. Yeah, just great, super, thanks. I'll take a lunge at me. <laughs> Before the muck can be dug in, the builder's rubble has to be dug out. In order to dig those beds, it would have been a week's work, and it would just been too punishing to even attempt. But yet again, digger at hand, job done in an hour. So big, big Al's making a great job. He is. He's, he's a, he knows what he's doing. I think a good digger, man, you could spend hours just Standing and watching them work. Is that why you stand and watch me for so long? <laughs> you just admiring my handiwork. I just thought it was. I thought you were idle. <laughs> it was never happening, was it? With the space, rubbish. So <laughs> everything else is great. But there's nothing more frustrating than sowing your crops and then looking at them and they're just not performing. And and it's the sort with the larger beds that are in deep soil, you can grow the deep-rooted plants. Even a it's, humble carrot. Yeah. Well, you think of the carrot the root that you eat could be, you know, what, six, ten inches long. But the tap root can go down three or four metres. Horseradish, 12 metres. A horseradish will penetrate the ground. And you'd, all you'd end up with is novelty vegetables yeah. if you grew things on this, yeah. which would kind of keep us mildly entertained for an hour or so. While the digger was weaving its magic, I took a little time out in the tunnel with Dave to see what he's already managed to grow. There's been some colossal changes here since we were last uh, it's standing a bit drier, in with the And you can get in now. A bit warmer. A bit warmer. I'm in shorts. I've ended up building the two raised beds and um, made them nice and long and just got plenty of stuff in. And I'm just trying things really. Yeah, and your tomatoes are coming along nicely. They're coming on this, this all at different stages. And you've gone for the natural pest control with the marigolds. I thought I'd give it a go. Okay, and I see you've stuck by what grows together, goes together with your basil sitting in yes. amongst your, your tomatoes there. And that's a, this is a Thai one. And it's just the smell, I just love the smell. I end up picking it and just rubbing it in my fingers mm -hmm. first of all. Just, it's just yep. lovely, it really is. Oh look. A small load, well, 20 tonnes, of topsoil. Yes, I can sense a big job for me coming on. Where's the digger away? It's good stuff. Good. Maybe good for your spuds. Excellent. Should we go and plant some trees and leave Colin to move the... Um... Yeah. <laughs> That's no problem. Move Where's the, the shovel? Uh, just equally divide <laughs> that into Where the... do you see? When you think of your harvesting fruits and veggies and... Yeah. There's a lot of products going out of the garden. You've got to put a lot going in. And that's essentially in the form of nutrients and organic matter. The nice thing about doing this sort of garden is you can you can pretty much play with anything. You know, you can put in anything you like. So I wondered if you'd wanted to have a play with these wee beasties. But this is a very special hazel, the kind of latest craze in hazel grow. And the roots are impregnated with a fungus. Um, and actually most fungi aren't at all a problem to plants. They kind of coexist with the mm -hmm. plants around us. So this is a mycorrhizal fungi. And um, the result is once you plant it in the ground and they start to grow, you get truffles. Excellent. And so the, the, the principle is that you should end up with these. There you oh, go. Two little black truffles, 35 pounds for two truffles. So if in five years time you get yeah, two you truffles. Get, if you get two truffles, it's, it's been You've well hit the jackpot on little black truffles. Excellent. But they're, they're dead easy to, to grow. I mean, there's a the truffles aren't necessarily going to create great crops here, but that doesn't matter because that single truffle that Dave harvests in five years' time would be the best truffle he's ever tasted. Just need a pig or something like that to start <laughs> sniffing them out. Good at finding them, but it'll also eat them. Right. So it could become a very expensive pig. You're much better off with a Jack Russell. Jack Russell. <laughs> Is there anything you don't know, Chris? Come on and do some real work. Sense you're feeling the pressure today, sir. <sighs> so we well, one more a beige wing. One of the lovely things about your garden is the way that the, the land wraps around the building. It almost encapsulates the building and it gives you an opportunity to play with different 
spaces, you know, get a completely different character as you come round from the veggie gardens at that end round into, into this, well, blank canvas. This is going to be what you're going to see all the time and, and, and you want something that looks pretty. When the sun comes out. And it does. This is quite a nice space. Yeah, nice and sheltered. And logic would have it that this is a space that you spill out of the sitting room yeah. into this space. A space out here, a garden around it, with viewing from that end, viewing from this end, and viewing from the, the, the house itself. Excellent, sounds good. At the moment, um, it is just a bare piece of soil, really, and not even that, it's mud. Here we go for another one of Chris's designs in the back of a fag packet. A landing, almost, a seating area or a dining area in the centre of the garden, and then rose garden around. Then Dave had to seek approval from the missus. <laughs> Is that a yes? Have we got approval from the boss then? Can we continue? Yes. She's oh. all right with yep. She likes the view from the kitchen window. Well, that's it. She... Mm. Yep. She can stand there when she's in the dishes and look out. <laughs> well, you walked away from the window before you said that. <laughs> that's your linking path through. It's just been a bit of a, a mud bath. So it'll be quite nice to actually have an area as it sort of grows over the next few weeks and months that we can then actually sit and, and enjoy it. Hope everybody likes tomatoes. Homegrown tomatoes are like sweeties. And talking of sweeties, here's two kids in the sweetie shop. Thanks. This packaging is perfect for Colin, look. Planting instructions, this way up. Keep it simple, that's what I say. Just feel like Christmas. It does. If you look over here, and there's somewhere. There it is. There we go. That one. Let me just grab a leaf in there. Two, four, six, eight, nine leaflets. Mm -hmm. And this one, five, five leaflets. Nice. Old rose, new rose, all the new rose varieties a have five. five leaflets, occasionally seven. But the older ones have all got sevens or nines. You get a much better flowering season with, with these things. With the, the, with the newer roses? Yeah, with the new roses. The disadvantage is that the new roses are more susceptible to disease. Right. You know, you, you never see Rosa rugosa with mildew and black spot, whereas the new varieties, you tend to. So what the mm. breeders are now doing is to try and breed some of the resilience of the old varieties into the back into the new ones. So there's a right old, uh, right old mix here. Did you know there's a Chris Beardshaw rose as well? Is there? Which obviously will be taking pride of place yes. in your garden. And it's a kind of, it's a masculine sort of rose in a shade of baby doll pink. <laughs> it's my feminine, I'm in touch with the feminine side. I get it from Colin. What I want to do is, is something which is full of fragrance, full of blooms, based around roses and a large seating area. Chris, you go girl. There's nothing wrong with two boys getting in touch with their feminine side. Where's Colin gone? Urgent business in Tuscany, I think you'll find. Well, while you were away, we managed to build a few more beds, this time for ornamental plants, and in particular, our rather fabulous roses. I've tried to move away from that rather sort of funereal look that mm. we grew up with as yeah. kids, which is rose, 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 nothing on the ground, just sort of bleached out. That's what gave roses such a bad yep. reputation. This is a slightly different way of doing it, in so much as we're using a whole host of different roses, different flowering styles, different flowering length, and also different habits. So some are upright, like Fantin Latour, for instance, in the centre. It's one of those big fluted, almost like a kind of champagne vase. It's a very kind of grand right. plant. Framing that on either side, slightly darker colours, just to add a little bit of warmth to the garden. And on this side, it's frilly, it's frou-frou, it's almost like a kind of ballerina's tutu. It's Darcy Bustle. So you've got Darcy Bustle in the garden, which you can, you can claim at school you've had Darcy Bustle in the garden. Which you, and then what you do is to start to introduce some of the more pastel shades. And you'll find also the herbaceous will help to, to protect the roses too. Now this is quite a general mix of herbaceous, but they've been chosen so that they either just peep through the branches and leaves of the roses without impeding their growth, mm -hmm. or they spread around underneath a little bit like a carpet and they nestle themselves against the understory. Mm -hmm. Neither are really going to affect the roses, they're actually going to enhance the roses' performance. Roses don't like being alone. They're very gregarious. They like to be partnered with other plants. Much better to treat them as they deserve the queen of the shrub border, 
and then surround them with all their ladies in waiting, the glamorous herbaceous plants that will just very politely just play around underneath the skirt of the roses. Fair play though, Chris. By the time we were both back, Dave and Julie had put in a huge amount of work to their garden again on both the productive side and the ornamental side. And look at it now. Chris, you know, I, I was away for one day and this has sprung up. Mm. You know, sometimes you have to make decisions about what you want in life. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes those things are very ephemeral and, you know, and, and, and sometimes you want to go for something that's got a bit more substance and a bit more meaning to it. So, you know, you opted for the Saint-Tropez spray on tan <laughs> after 10 days of relaxing by a swimming pool, dangling our pinkies in the water. Well, there's certainly some fragrance around here. <laughs> and the roses are fighting very manfully through the yeah. rather um, abundant and ripe smell of the mushroom compost. <laughs> the mushroom compost we used to use, and it stinks. There's no two ways about it, but it is very good. And they're beside a mushroom farm. Let's stick a fork into it and see what happens. <laughs> It'll just melt the fork. <laughs> and that's not the only surprise. Something else new. Well, guys, just behind us, this rose garden has sprung up. Mm -hmm. I knew nothing about it, but it's, it's great. And over here, there's, some, there's something else has been happening. We've laid a bit of lawn, and we're planning actually of changing it slightly. We're thinking about having a slightly larger area mm -hmm. down this area here against the wall um, so we can um, barbecue and, uh, and entertain. Well David always talked about a, he wanted a barbecue area and he wanted it over there because you get the obviously the evening sun but we didn't realise just how much he wanted to entertain there. We've been able to say we don't it, like it. it. <laughs> we, it's not that we, well no it's not that we didn't like it we just so one slight to area wanted it, yeah. to change slightly and then we've been able to work with that. And what happens to the to the, the lawn now? Are, are we sh for shortening it much? We're having a chat about it, weren't we? And bringing it in, yeah, um, probably to around about where this one is here. Worth just thinking about the size of those elements though, because if you've got a hedge, your hedge is going to be 50 centimetres minimum mm -hmm. width in order for it to be a decent height yeah. and for it to look like a proper hedge so that's that's going to take you to about there yeah. if you're reducing the size of your border down by 60 you end up with a border which is less than a meter wide which is which is it's going to look meaningless mm -hmm. so I think we're in danger of trying to include too many elements right. in here and it may be worth considering keeping the borders where they are but doing away with the lawn mm. much better to say well this area here where the lawn is that's going to be hard surface and then you've still got room for some decent sized borders and your barbecue. Yeah. If you take that centre line off the path, you can still utilise that. So you can come in here to a permanent barbecue fixed in here. So you've got the, the facility and then you can have a couple of um, low walls coming out with maybe prep surfaces. Because there's always, you know, what do you do with your yeah, utensils yeah. And, your, yeah. and your food? And, and you've got things and you want to put things down when you exactly. put trays, trays so and food. Yeah. Either side of that becomes planting. You could put a tree there and there, which gives you a bit of height. You could create a, a great little outdoor kitchen. Mm -hmm. And then the borders drift out from that. And when you want to serve the food, you walk out and you've got your, your um, dining well, area out yeah. here. And I think if you went for a relatively loose surface here. Maybe one along that lines then, today. Okay. Yeah. The whole thing has a much more edible and organic feel about it amongst this rather more formal structure. And that's great, you know, it's, it doesn't detract from what we'd originally proposed. It just means that it means a lot more to Dave and Julie. Is that an accurate size to think of the table you might get? So I would think so, you could get... Four. Yeah, that would be ideal. Yeah. yeah. The turf would be fine if it's left, and it is beautifully laid turf, Roger. Well, unfortunately, it does have to become hard surface. Sorry. <laughs> Are you making a mess of that? <laughs> Look at this fine example of an Olympic athlete. That's what you get for taking time off. 
Boy, that's weird thing. Oh, well, now you've torn it. Yeah. <laughs> Is it easier putting it down or lifting it up, Roger? <laughs> hey! Move over deck, I'll show you how to do it. I had, a, I had that problem yesterday. Right, go. See if I can just do it. First. When a young child has a little bit too much sugar, they get a bit excitable. Just watch for a <laughs> and a bit hysterical. That's, that's kind of what's <laughs> happening now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he just had a few too many of those blue sweeties at lunch. <laughs> Stop making me laugh. I'm trying to plant those fruit bushes in a straight line. Are you going for the staggered line? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Don't let Declan see that, otherwise he'll have his string line out <laughs> correcting that. Now he's got to go absolutely OCD to make sure his aren't. <laughs> I think we're going to overtake each other. <laughs> Mate. <laughs> look, look, mine's all neatly. Look, <laughs> I, uh, it just have to rain into the hub. <laughs> Trees. Yeah, well. Where should we put them? Where would you like them? We've got um, walnuts, filberts. And what is a filbert? Well, a filbert. This is this is a filbert. Because we we were looking at the labels now. We were. You have probably seen them in, in a mixed bag of nuts. Okay. At Halloweenish. You know, time. Yeah, you know, a hazelnut is round, mm -hmm. whereas a filbert is more egg-shaped, so it's more like, like an that. almond almost. Yeah. Oh, there's a picture. There oh yes. It's uh -huh. got those kind of yeah. big shaggy ears to them, and it's much more prolific than um, than a hazelnut. You're much more likely to get nuts on it. The work is really moving on. You rotivated the area for the nuttery, while Roger was left with the job of mulching the new rose beds with ripe mushroom compost. Now, Chris, for your next trick. This project's at a stage where we're making big steps forward, partially because Dave's been doing the work whilst we've been away. So he's, he's really seized the initiative and, and moved the projects forward, which means that every time we come in, Connor and I can then move the project forward even further. And so it's almost a game of catch up. So the kind of frame is starting to form, isn't it? Yeah. Gives you an idea. From what I expected Still at the beginning of the day, the we've to an extent gone to something completely <laughs> different. <laughs> now the, the new space is going to be far, far better. It's nice to have the grass area, but we're going to have so much grass to the back. It'll be nice to have the, mm. the more entertaining social adult space, really. Mm. Yeah. And speaking of adult entertainment. So when, you, when this one comes up, you throw that one around that way instead of underneath. There you go, that's, that's it. Time for a recap, Chris. This started out being about Dave and Julie wanting to grow more of their own, so we set them up with a polytuddle and raised beds. Then we prepared yet more ground to make a small orchard for fruit bushes. The final touch was to plant a nuttery. Julie and Dave will now be able to go from fork to fork, garden to kitchen. But this garden is a game of two halves, and it's also important to have a social space. And in this case, we built an outdoor kitchen diner surrounded by the heady scent of roses. This is like um, landscaping with um, the man from the milk tray advert <laughs> and someone out of Brokeback Mountain. I was just looking at our respective outfits and <laughs> would I have... <laughs> I brought my own shirt. <laughs> we need, we need oh, no, to get here. some sort of harmony between I, I, our I, outfits. Right. I'm going to go get my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Dave and Julie really worked their socks off over the summer to fill their new beds to capacity with edibles in the productive side of the garden. And on the ornamental side of the garden, they can relax amongst the bountiful borders and fabulous fragrances. It's nice to see this with a bit of sunshine on it and, and drying up as well. You've got to wet it down to compact it. I was kind of expecting it to be more dust. I know it's quarry dust, but I was expecting it to be more you know, sink into it, but it's actually... I think you can get hung up on the type of yeah. product that you use, thinking that's where the beauty comes from. Yeah. I think you, really, when these the plants start filling and they'll do their bit, yeah. and this really isn't that important. If any of your friends turn up and start commenting on the surface instead of the quality of the plants, <laughs> you need to think about your friend's <laughs> choice more carefully, <laughs> really. Dave has rendered the wall, 
The barbecue area is nearly finished and now he and Chris are planting something a little unusual for Northern Ireland, figs. Have you resolved what's going on with the barbecue, Dave? Yeah, we, uh, we're planning on getting it rendered, same, same, to, uh, same as the wall. Yeah. So this will be cooking in here? Cooking. And that'll be prep and serving? Prep and serving there, cooking here, and then we're gonna have another bit of granite worked up there, so you can just set things and utensils and so on. But it's a great spot, I mean, yeah. especially on a day like today. It'd be... Oh, it's... Will it be finished it? for this afternoon by the time we... Mm, maybe not. We could maybe stand the gas barbecue in there for now. We'll get Colin, he's good at gassing. <laughs> he spent so much time in the garden creating good planting and rooting zone mm. for most plants. Figs are exactly the opposite. Right. You spend a lot of time digging a big hole and then filling it full of rubbish. Give it good fertile growing conditions and it's just away. I mean, I've got brown turkey at home and it goes up 12, 15 feet a year. The idea is to give it poor rooting conditions, which reduces the size of the leaf, it reduces the vigor of the plant, and what you end up with is the plant panicking and producing lots of fruit. Okay. So we'll make little boxes and then backfill with a bit of rubble, a little bit of soil as well, but a bit of rubble, and then plant the figs into that. And it'll just right. help to, to sort of hold them back a little bit. The figs are going to need a little support to spread across Dave's new wall. That's what I'm trying to do there. So just mark it. Just leave me little kisses on the wall. If you do the same on that end, I'll stop drilling. You tried to do the undertaking. I know, I'm, I, I just look at the record. Yeah, look at oh. that. Oh. Well, I didn't want at the beginning uh, was what well, it was all done for you. I didn't want to be sat in the house and come out and or we go away for a weekend and come back and da da, you've got a garden. And yeah, it's something that we have been able to work on together. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just fabulous. I used to be quite good at this. <laughs> Blame having children, it's fabulous. You should never play this when you're sober. <laughs> Thank you. You've got to admit, this must be the nicest pool arena <laughs> ever. It's brilliant. It's like a picture frame, mm -hmm. almost just sort of frames all the, the different areas, and it, it really works. It's completely not what I was expecting, but I'm, I'm so pleased with it. Really, really happy with it. It's a great learning environment for Theo as he gets older. And, you know, God, I'd, have, I'd have loved to have a garden like this oh, if I was, amazing. when I was growing up. So it's going to be really enjoyable to see it develop. And, and grow. Did we win that one? Of course. Yeah. Was that 4-0 was that or 5-0? I lost quite No, yeah. we won the first one. Second one? Did that was just, that was just practicing. Oh, was, we weren't actually competitive <laughs> at that point. We let you win. On a lovely crisp morning where you've got the frost like this morning, it just looked fantastic, the whole area, just thinking, that's ours, we were able to go out and use that space. The first time um, everybody came, Theo was uh, five days old and he's now six months old. So it, within six months we've done really what we were pl probably planning on doing over four or five years. <laughs> Maybe even six. And probably even six. <laughs> Are you giving away smiles?